Praise the Lord. I'm going to be teaching tonight on the seven blessings for giving the Passover offering. All this is just one of the most wonderful truths and one of the most life-changing truths from the Word of God that I have ever learned. I tell you, it changed my life, and I pray that it will be a life-changing teaching for each of you also. And now, before we talk about the blessings for giving the Passover offering, first, let's talk a little bit about the Feast of Passover. I want to, to point out in Exodus chapters 31 through 32 just how important God considers the Feast of Passover and us giving our Passover offering is to Him. In Exodus chapters 31 and 32, while Moses was up on the mountain receiving the Ten Commandments from God, the children of Israel was down in the valley below breaking the Ten Commandments. Yeah. And in Exodus chapter 34, God called Mo to go back up on the mountain again to give him the second set of the Ten Commandments. Because you remember when Moses came down from the mountain with the, the tablets of stone and there the children of Israel was worshiping that golden calf and Moses threw the tablets of stone down and he broke them. So in, in Exodus chapter 34, God calls Moses to go back up on the mountain and he's going to give him the Ten Commandments again. Give him the second set. But before God gave Moses the Ten Commandments again, God told Moses that they were to keep three main feasts each year and that all of the males, all of the men were to appear before God for the three main feasts. Now there are seven feasts that are listed and given in the Old Testament and God said out of these seven I want everybody to appear before me for three of these feasts. So in Exodus chapter 34, in verse 18, God says, The feast of unleavened bread shalt thou keep. And that is just another word and another term for the feast of Passover. In verse 20, God says, None shall appear before me empty. In other words, you, when you come before me, you are to bring something in your hand to give to me. Verse 22, God says, Thou shalt observe the feast of weeks of the first fruits of the wheat harvest. That's just another term for the feast of Pentecost. And God said, the feast of ingathering at the year's end. And we know that the last feast at the, in the fall of the year is Feast of Tabernacles. So God said in verse 23, thrice in a year, or three times in a year, shall all your men children appear before the Lord God, the God of Israel. And God told them, he promised them, that they would appear before him and keep these three feasts. God promised them in verses 24 through 25. He says, I'm going to drive out your enemies. I'm going to enlarge your borders. I'm going to give you the, your land that the enemy has been inhabiting. So God says again, stand before me now with your sacrifice of the feast of Passover. Verse 25, look at it. God said, I want you to come before me. I want you to celebrate the feast of Passover. They were to eat that Passover lamb and God instructed them that none of it was to be left until the morning. They would eat all of the lamb. Verse 26, and God said, the first of the first fruits of thy land shalt thou bring into the house of the Lord. Verse 28, and he was there, Moses was there with the Lord 40 days and 40 nights. 
And he wrote upon the tables the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. So after God gave his instruction and his commandment to Moses concerning these three feasts and the three offerings that they were to bring at these three feasts, then God gave Moses the Ten Commandments again. So think about it. These three feasts and the three offerings Passover, Feast of Passover, Feast of Pentecost, Feast of Tabernacles. These three feasts and bringing an offering to God was so important to God that he gave a commandment concerning these three feasts and the offerings before he gave Moses the Ten Commandments again. So do you think these are important to God? I do. If he would put these instructions of these three feasts before the Ten Commandments, I would say they're pretty high up on God's to-do list, wouldn't you? And God told the children of Israel that they were to keep the, the feast and these offerings forever. Let's, let's read about it. Exodus chapter 12. Now we're going to just briefly touch on the Feast of Passover because we're going to be talking about giving the Passover offering. Exodus chapter 12. In this chapter, we have the institution or the very first time that the Feast of Passover was put in place and instituted. God was getting ready to deliver his children out of Egyptian bondage. And what was he going to use in order to, to deliver them? He was going to use a lamb. And in Exodus chapter 12, verse 2, God says, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Now God said the feast of Passover month, whatever month that falls, it, it will be either in March or April, according to our calendar each year. And God said at the Feast of Passover, this month is going to be the beginning of months. It's going to be the beginning of a new year on my calendar. Mm -hmm. Now, we go by the Gregorian calendar, which goes from January 1st mm -hmm. to December 31st. But God mm -hmm. goes by the Jewish calendar, mm -hmm. which is from Passover mm -hmm. to Passover. From the Feast of Passover this year to the Feast of Passover next year. That's God's year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, the new year, according to God's calendar, began this year at sundown on Friday night, March the 30th. And it goes for a 24-hour period. So, it ended on Saturday night, March the 31st. That was the Feast of Passover. And you're thinking, well, Passover's already come and gone, so then why are we teaching on giving the Passover offering? Well, the Passover offering is the only offering in the entire Bible that God gives you two opportunities to give. This offering is so important to God that he gives you another opportunity to give this offering if you miss the first Passover and giving the first Passover offering. So, in Exodus chapter 12, verses 3 through 6, is God's instructions for the children of Israel to select the lamb. And it was to be selected, God said, on the 10th day of the month. And they were to keep that lamb up until the 14th day. And then that Passover lamb was to be slain or killed in the evening on the 14th day of the month. Which marks, now remember, God's day begins at sundown in the evening. And that marks a new day on God's calendar. And in Exodus chapter 12, if, if you just want to make notes in verse 7, I wish we had time to read all of Exodus 12, but we don't. So just jot down some notes. God instructed them in verse 7 of Exodus 12 
that they were to take the blood of the lamb. And what were they to do with that blood? Apply it to the lentils and the doorposts of their houses. Verses 8 through 11. And then God said, all right, you are to roast that, that lamb. And then you are to eat that lamb. And in Exodus chapter 12, verses 12 through 13, God said, I'm going to pass through the land. And I'm going to smite the firstborn of every house. But God said, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. So that's where this feast mm -hmm. got Passover. its name, the Feast of Passover. Now, verse 14, look at your handout, Exodus chapter 12, verse 14. God said, and this day shall be unto you for a memorial, and ye shall keep it a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. Ye shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. Mm -hmm. So how long? Forever. How long is forever? Just yeah. until the Old Testament ended? Yeah. No. Yeah. Just till the book of Acts ended mm -hmm. and the church age? No. no. God said you are to keep this feast forever. So are we to keep this feast? Mm -hmm. Yes. Are we to stand before God with our Passover offering every year? Yes. God said, do it how long? Forever. And he said it again. You always can tell if something is very important to God. He repeats yes. it at least twice. So there it is in Exodus chapter 12, verse 14. Now look at verse 24 of Exodus chapter 12. God said, and you shall observe this thing, this feast of Passover, for an ordinance to thee and to thy sons. How long? Forever. Yes. All right. Now, in Exodus chapter 23, I want you to turn it in your Bible to Exodus chapter 23. Now, in verse 14 of Exodus chapter 23, we have God's instructions to the children of Israel. Three times thou shalt keep a feast unto me in the year, God said. And look at the, I wish we had time to read this whole passage, but we don't. We'll just read the main portions of some of the verses. Look at verse 15. This, I call it the C part, A, B, C. The last part of verse 15. God said, none shall appear before me empty, mm -hmm. God said. And what were they to bring to the Lord? their Passover offering. And if it was the Feast of Pentecost, they was to bring the Feast of Pentecost offering. And if it was the end of the year, at the Feast of Tabernacles, they was to bring God an offering for the Feast of Tabernacles. Now look at verse 19. Verse 19, the very beginning of the verse. The first of the first fruits of the land, God said. The first of the first fruits of the land. Thou shalt bring into the house of the Lord thy God. This was the offering that they was to bring before the Lord. Now, of the three feasts and of the three offerings, the Passover offering is the most important one of all. How do we know that? Because Passover offering, like I told you, is the only offering in the entire Bible, Old Testament and New Testament. It's the only offering that God gives you two opportunities to give. Now, I put these in your, in your handout, just the, the scripture references, in Numbers chapter 9, verses 1 through 14. Hopefully you'll have time to read that later. And in the book of 2 Chronicles, chapter 30, verses 1 through 20. These are two passages where the some of the men, they said, wait a minute. We haven't purified ourselves. We can't celebrate the Feast of Passover on the 14th of the first month like you've commanded us. What about us? In Numbers chapter 9, we, we have some men that had to bury someone who had died. And so God was very strict. 
concerning the laws of, of touching anyone who was dead and who cleanliness was is all throughout the, his laws and commandments in Leviticus in order to keep down the spread of a plague. Can you imagine two and a half million people? Mm -hmm. What a infection or a plague would spread like wildfire and wipe out thousands of them. So God said, now if you've got to bury someone, then you're going to be unclean and you've got to go through the ritual cleansing process. The mikvah, mm -hmm. which is, is immersion mm -hmm. in water. You've got to bring a sacrifice. The priest has got to slay the sacrifice. And all of these rules and regulations in order to be purified. So these men came to Moses and said, Moses, we can't help it because this guy died and we had to bury him. Why can't we celebrate the Feast of Passover with everybody else? That wasn't our fault because he died. We want to celebrate the Feast of Passover too. We want to bring our offering before the Lord too. What do we do, Moses? And Moses said, I don't know, wait right here. So Moses <laughs> goes to the tent of meeting. He goes before the God and he says, God, what about these men that are ritually unclean and cannot celebrate the Passover because they are, are unclean because they've had to bury this person who died? And God said, all right, if, if anyone is impure, or if they're on a long journey, if they're traveling and absolutely cannot get back in order to celebrate the Feast of Passover on the 14th of the month, then they can celebrate the Passover 30 days later in the second month. So... God said, all right, you go and, and, and Moses and you tell these men that they can celebrate it 30 days from now. I, I don't mm -hmm. want them to miss an miss opportunity it. of giving the Passover offering. And so in 2 Chronicles chapter 30 verses 1 through 20, it's another instance. And for the sake of time, I won't go over it. Maybe you can read it later. That these people, these children, parts of the children of Israel, they hadn't, they hadn't sanctified themselves and, and purified themselves either. And there it was, time to celebrate the Feast of Passover. So God says, all right, you can celebrate it 30 days later. So the Feast of Passover and giving your Passover offering is the only offering that God gives you two opportunities to give. It is that important to God. And you may be thinking, well, Lord, I really don't have any extra money to give. It takes all that I make to pay bills. And isn't that the true a lot of times? Well, jot this scripture down. In 2 Chronicles chapter 35, verses 1 through 19, now I just put the reference in your handout. King Josiah, he was a good king, one of the kings up for over the children of Israel. And the children of Israel, they had been disobedient. Imagine that. <laughs> uh, one, time after time, we read all through the Old Testament mm -hmm. how the children of Israel would serve God for a while, mm -hmm. then they'd turn away yeah. from serving God and start worshiping idols and just doing all kinds of things that God commanded them not to do. So the children of Israel had been disobedient and had not kept the feast of passover mm -hmm. uh oh god uh -oh. said how long are you to keep it forever. forever so king josiah he was a good king like i said and he restored the feast of passover and in second chronicles chapter 35 verses 7 through 9 you can just jot that reference down king josiah gave the people all the animals for their Passover offerings, everything they needed, King Josiah gave to the people. 
So if you purpose in your heart that you want to give the Passover offering to the Lord, God will provide you with the money for you to give it. Why? Because it's a promise of His word in His word that God says in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 10. God says that he gives seed to the sower. Hallelujah. Look at it. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 10. Now he that ministers seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food and multiply your seed song. God will provide yes. you with the money that you need in order to stand before him with a Passover offering. God said now three times a year you're to give a special offering. This is above your tithes, above what you would normally give as offerings. Three times a year God said, hey, I want you to give me a special offering. And God's promise to us is that he will provide seed to the sower. Yeah. He'll give us the money. Yep. To turn around and give back to Him. God will provide us what we need to give to Him. Now in Exodus chapter 23, in verse 15, the C part, the last part of the verse. Now like we read a minute ago, God said, And none shall appear before me empty. Mm -hmm. And what were they to receive it for their obedience... For standing before the Lord with their Passover offerings. What were they to receive? Well, that's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about the seven blessings. God yes. promised seven blessings yes. to his children if they would stand before him and give the feast of Passover offering. Then when it came time for the feast of Pentecost, if they would give that offering. Then in the fall of the year, if they would give the Feast of Tabernacles offering, God promises them seven blessings. And those seven blessings are not just for the children of Israel in the Old Testament. They're for us today. Mm -hmm. The right. first blessing that God promises if we stand before Him with our special offering is in verses 20 through 21. 20 through 21, God said, Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. Beware of him, the King James says, or in other words, be aware of him and obey his voice. Provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. Now look down at verse 23 for a minute. For mine angel shall go before thee and bring thee in unto the Amorites and the Hittites and the Perizzites and the Canaanites and the Hivites and the Jebusites, all the ites crowd. And what does God say? I will cut them off. I will cut your enemies off. So the first promise for standing before God with your Passover offering. And remember, you got a second opportunity to give it. Hallelujah. The Passover shinny, which is the second Passover this month, begins at sundown on Saturday, April 28th. And it ends at sundown on Sunday, April 29th. So that's your second opportunity. To stand before God with your Passover offering. What's that first promise that God says? God will dispatch an angel that will yes. lead you to your miracle. Yes. Do you need a miracle in your mm. life? I do. Yes. Yes. Do you need a miracle of healing? Do you need a miracle of finances? Do you need a miracle in your home? Yes. Do you need a miracle in restoration mm. of relationships? Your children mm. uh, to obey the Lord and serve the Lord. Your grandchildren. Yes. Whatever you need. Whatever miracle you need. Whatever you need God to do in your behalf. The first <laughs> blessing for standing before him with your Passover offering is that God will dispatch an mm. angel mm. Yes. and that angel will lead you to your miracle. Now look at what God said. God said, my angel will go before you. My angel will keep you. 
Yes. Now what does that sound like? Psalms 91 yes. verse 11. I put it in your hand out. Look at it. Mm -hmm. For he shall give his angels charge yes. over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. So God said, I'm going to dispatch my angel. My angel will go before you. My angel will keep you. And my angel will bring you into the place which I have prepared. Mm. Hallelujah. Mm. Look at verse 23 again. They're just the first part of it. For mine angel shall go before thee and bring thee in unto the Amorites. And he listed all of the Ites crowd, all of the enemies of the children of Israel. And God said, I will cut them off, for I will defeat them yes. for you. Now, just think about some instances in the Bible where God sent an angel yes. to deliver and to protect his people. We just talked mm -hmm. about it in Exodus chapter 12, that first Passover night. Mm -hmm. What did God send? He sent an angel. Mm -hmm. And that angel went through the streets that night. And that angel killed all of the firstborn of the house of the Egyptians. All, every house that didn't have the blood of the mm -hmm. lamb on the lentils and doorposts, that death angel killed the firstborn in that house but all of the houses of the children of israel that had put the blood of the passover lamb on their doors that angel passed by them that angel protected them mm -hmm. and kept them safe because they had the blood of the lamb on their doorpost in exodus chapter 14 verses 18 through 20 when god brought the children of israel out of egypt what did he do? He sent his angel to go before them and lead them. Exodus chapter 14 verses 18 through 20. And the angel of the Lord went, went before the camp of Israel. He removed and went behind them. And the pillar of cloud went from before their face and stood behind them. So when the children of Israel... They left Egypt. That angel went in mm -hmm. front of them, leading them out. And then when they came to the Red Sea, that angel went from it being in front of the children of Israel, went to the rear, mm -hmm. went into the back of where the children of Israel were, and stood behind them and protected them from Pharaoh's army. You know, Pharaoh and his army was hot on their trail. They was trying to overtake them and lead, bring them back into mm -hmm. Egyptian bondage again. So that angel went and stood in the back of the children of Israel and protected them from Pharaoh's army. And in the book of Joshua, in Joshua chapter 5 verses 10 through 11 and in, in verse 13 through 15, you can look this up later. Joshua had restored the feast of Passover and the very next day a man stood before him with his sword drawn in his hand and Joshua asked this man are you for us or are you against us are you on our side or are you an enemy and that angel said I am the captain of the Lord's host God sent his angel to lead his people into the promised land. And you say, oh, all of that's Old Testament. What about the New Testament? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> in Luke chapter 22, in verses 39 through 43, Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane. He was struggling with the decision to be obedient to his Father and go to the cross and die for you and me. And he was praying and he was in such agony that his sweat became mm -hmm. as great drops of blood. He prayed, Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. He was in such agony till he, he was sweating drops of blood. And what did God do? Verse 43, God sent an angel mm -hmm. from heaven yep. and strengthened the yep. Lord Jesus. That angel must have showed Jesus his future beyond the cross. Because in Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2 tells us mm -hmm. who for the joy that was set before him... 
set before who? Jesus, Jesus, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. Jesus was able to look beyond the suffering that he was going to endure and see the joy. See you being born again yes. and you and each and every person who would accept him as Lord and Savior and what joy that brought him. And it gave him the courage and it gave him the strength to face the cross and the agony of the coming hours that he would have to face. But what did God do? Send his angel to strengthen our Lord Jesus. Mm. Why did God do that? Because Jesus had just got up from the Passover table where he had celebrated the feast of Passover with his disciples. Jesus had kept the feast mm -hmm. of Passover. And then three days after Jesus' death, what happened? He was resurrected. And on resurrection morning, what did God do? God sent an angel. And that angel rolled back the stone and announced to the women, He's not here, but He is risen. <laughs> Hallelujah. And who, had, who did God dispatch? His angel. Give you another example. Peter, Acts chapter 12, verses 1 through 19. Peter was in prison, and King Herod intended to kill Peter. Oh, but it was Passover time. Mm. Now, if you look this passage up and then read it in the King James, it's very unfortunate. The King James translators translated it as Easter instead mm. of yeah. the Feast of Passover. Here in Acts chapter 12, that's the only time in the entire Bible that Easter is mentioned. Mm -hmm. And it should have been translated by the King James translators as the Feast of Passover because that's what it was. Had nothing to do with the pagan holiday of Easter. <laughs> so Peter was in prison. King Herod intended to kill him, but it was Passover time. Mm. So the scripture tells us in this passage that Peter was chained between two soldiers. Peter was asleep mm -hmm. and the angel <laughs> of the Lord went inside that prison cell, slapped old Pete on the side and said, wake up Pete. And Pete's chains fell off mm -hmm. and the angel led him out of prison. Mm -hmm. Now, why was Peter asleep? Because he was Jewish and he had given his Passover offering. He had kept the feast of Passover because God had commanded them to keep it how long? Forever. Forever. God had commanded every male to stand before him at those three feasts. Feast of Passover, Pentecost, and Tabernacles. And it was Passover time here in Acts, in Acts chapter 12. So Peter had stood before God. He had celebrated the Feast of Passover. He had given his offering. And Pete knew that he was not going to die at that time. How did he know that? Because Jesus himself had told Peter in John chapter 21, verses 18 through 19, Jesus had told Peter that he would not die until he was old. Mm -hmm. So Pete knew, hey, I'm not going to die right now. Uh, it's not my time yet. So that's why he was laying there chained between two soldiers, snoozing and snoring away. He knew he wasn't going to die. So what did God send to deliver Pete? His angel. Hallelujah. So that's the first blessing for standing before God with your Passover offering is that whatever you need from God, whatever miracle you need, I need a healing miracle. And I believe in God. I'm yes. reminding God, God, I stand before you yes, with my, my Passover heart. offering. And I'm expecting yes. my miracle. And if you need finances, yes. if you need your children restored, if that's a strained relationship or your children, grandchildren, husband, wife, whatever is not living for God, you can pray and say, God, I stood before you. Wow. With my Passover offering. And it's the promise that 
that you've given me that you'll dispatch your angel to lead me <laughs> to my miracle. You said your angel would go before me. Look at it, verse 20. Yep, right. Your angel would keep me mm -hmm. and your angel would bring me into the place, God, that you prepared, which is yep. victory, victory over yes. your enemies. Hallelujah. So, oh, we could spend all uh -huh. night on just <laughs> blessing number one, but let's move on to blessing number two. Blessing number two for standing before God. God will be an enemy mm -hmm. to your enemies and an adversary to your adversary. How do we Ooh. know? Verse mm -hmm. 22. But if thou shalt indeed obey his voice, talking about the angel that God dispatched, and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy unto thine enemies and an adversary unto thine adversaries. God will fight your battles for you. All through the Old Testament, we see time and again, over and over, we see God being an enemy to Israel's enemies, and he would fight for his people, fight for the children of Israel. He would defend them as long as the children of Israel served him, obeyed him. There wasn't an enemy army anywhere that could defeat them. Why? Because God would fight their enemies for them. Jot down some of these scriptures that we're going to refer to. And I've, I've listed them in your notes. In Exodus chapter 14, in verse 14, and then in verses 23 through 25, the children of Israel, they had eaten that first Passover meal, and God had sent his angel to lead them out of Egypt and into freedom. And God parted the Red Sea, and as the children of Israel, when they crossed the Red Sea, you know, Pharaoh and his chariots were right on their heels. They were trying to overtake them. So Pharaoh and his chariots went down into that, that dry riverbed of the Red Sea. And it, it says that God took off their chariot wheels. <laughs> and the chariots buried up in the sand of the riverbed. Pharaoh's army turned around and yelled to each other, Hey, turn around, run, boys, run. <laughs> Why? For the Lord fighteth for them against the Egyptians. Verse 25. They said, Hey, let's turn around and get out of here. Because God is fighting for yes. the children of Israel against us. And you know the story. The Red Sea that had been parted and the children of Israel went across safely. Then mm -hmm. the waters came together again and Pharaoh and his whole army was drowned. Why? Because the angel of the Lord had took off their mm -hmm. chariot wheels and they couldn't <laughs> get out of there. God fought yes. for yes. the children of Israel against their enemies. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah! In the book of Joshua, chapter 10, Joshua chapter 10 and verse 11. Joshua chapter 10 verse 11. Israel was fighting a battle with their enemies. And God sent hailstones. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. God has his own guided missile system. Yes. Think about that. <laughs> and the hailstones only hit the yep. enemy army. Yep. Didn't hit a one of the army of the children of Israel. Can you imagine mm -hmm. them fighting in hand-to-hand -hand combat and just <laughs> as as the one of the children of Israel had their sword drawn and ready to, to thrust it into the enemy's side and all of a sudden a big hailstorm and boinged him <laughs> on the head and there he fell out dead. And they didn't have to fight because oh, God, God fought God. their enemies for them. And when I was doing, doing research on this, I read in one of my Bible commentaries that hailstones have fallen that weigh over 300 pounds. Now, yeah. can you imagine? Ow. They ain't no way <laughs> wow. an enemy can defeat God's people. Why? Because if they're serving Him, 
living for him, walking with him. God's about being an enemy to your enemies and an adversary to your adversaries. So the giant hailstones killed off the enemy for the children of Israel. Here's another example in 2 Chronicles chapter 30, verses 1 through 5 and verse 15 through 20. King Hezekiah, he was another good king for the children of Israel. He had restored the Passover. When the children of Israel would become obedient, they would stop celebrating the feast of Passover. Dumb, 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 right? Yeah. Because God has said you're to keep it how long? Forever. Forever. So every time they'd get into disobedience, they'd, they'd stop keeping the feast of Passover. So King Hezekiah restored the feast of Passover. And then it, the scripture tells us in 2 Kings chapter 19, an enemy army was encamped against the, the children of Israel. And King Hezekiah prayed, and God sent one angel. One angel. And that one angel killed 185,000 oh. enemy soldiers wow. in one night. Wow. And I did the math on that. Yeah. When I studied that a long time ago, I thought, now how many would that one angel night. have to kill in order to kill 185,000 in one night. So I figured the days and, and the nighttime hours. Then I divided it all up by 185,000 and, and it came out, the math came out to five per second. Woo! Oh, wow. That angel killed five enemy soldiers per second in order to kill 185,000 enemy soldiers in one night. Did we say in the Congress? <laughs> Second Kings chapter 19, verses 34 through 35. That's the exact reference. Yes. God, give me another one. Joshua chapter 23, verse 10. God said, one man of you shall chase a thousand Ooh, for yes. the Lord your God, he it is that fighteth for you. As he had promised you. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, I love it, don't you? Yes. In 2 Kings chapter 3, an enemy army was coming against Israel. And King Jehoshaphat, he sought counsel of the prophet Elisha. And in verses 16 through 18 of 2 Kings chapter 3, Elisha said, Hey! Here's what you need to do. The Lord said to dig ditches. And you're not going to see wind. You're not going to see rain. But you're going to supernaturally see water. Fill those ditches. Yeah. Verse 18. He says this is but a light thing. In the sight of the Lord. Mm. He will deliver the Moabites in your hand. The prophet Elisha said hey. No, this is nothing for God. This is just a light thing. No big deal. God's going to deliver your enemies into your hand. And in verses 20 through 24, God supernaturally sent water to fill those ditches that they had dug. And not only that, but God made the water look red. Wow. Mm -hmm. So, when the enemy army looked down in the valley and saw all of these ditches filled with water that to <laughs> them looked red, they thought, hey, that's blood. They thought another army has come down and killed the, the Israelites, and we can just go down and take the spoil. We can go get their stuff. Mm -hmm. So, when they went down into the camp of Israel, the children of Israel was waiting on them, and they <laughs> killed them and defeated them. God mm. delivered their enemies into their hands. Why? Because they had been obedient to God. God said, I'll be an enemy to your enemies and an adversary to your adversaries. They had kept the Passover, and God supernaturally delivered them. Second Chronicles chapter 20. Not one, not two, but three enemy armies were coming against the army of Israel at the same time. Three armies, three against one. And in verse 12, King Jehoshaphat, 
he prayed and he said, God, we don't know what to do, mm. but our eyes are on you. God, we're looking to you. You show us what to do. Verse 15, God said, hey, don't be afraid for the battle is not yours, but God's. God said, hey, you don't have to fight this battle. I'll take care of the enemy for you. It's not your battle, it's mine. And in verse 17, God says, You shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourself, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord. And what did God tell them to do? Joyce, in verses 20 through 24, God instructed them to send out the singers, send out mm. the praise and worship. Yes worship team and so the praisers went out before the army they sang they worshiped the lord god sent out the choir first <laughs> think about it and then when the choir began to sing praises unto god god <coughs> confused the enemy and they turned on each other three enemy armies now that had come together to fight one little army of Israel. They became so confused when the praisers <laughs> praised and worshiped God until the three enemy armies turned on each other and killed each other. Hallelujah! Mm -hmm. When the enemy attacks you, begin to praise yeah. and worship yes. God. And what is, what's it going to do? It's going to confound your enemies. It's going to confuse the enemy. And God will fight your battle yes. and He will deliver you from whatever battle you are facing. God will be an enemy to your enemies and an adversary to your adversary. God will fight for you. Yes. yes. Mm. And did you realize whatever you're facing, whether it, whatever you're facing in the natural, whether it looks hopeless, God will defend you. God will stop people that are trying to hurt you. Lawsuits will be settled in your favor. <laughs> I know this for a fact. Several years ago, Joyce knows yes. about it. My best friend, supposedly, and her husband, they turned on me. They were trying to make me move from the house that I had paid him to build. He was a carpenter. And he said, hey, you need a place to live. I need a garage. So if you'll furnish the money, I will build you a garage apartment. You can live here rent free from now on. Mm -hmm. So I sunk $25,000 into my garage apartment. And well, then... Five years later, they started trying to make me move. They sued me. They served me three eviction notices. And it, it looked like in the natural there was no hope. Mm -hmm. It looked like I was going to be forced off of my, out of my home that I had paid $25,000 for and was supposed to have been able to live there from, from then on. And then one day when I came back from church, he was standing outside waiting for me. And he said, well, settle this out of court if you will do it. Because the court date was the very next week. And I said, you give me my money back and I'll move. He said, no, you move and then I'll give you your money back. Uh-uh, mm -mm. ain't going to happen. So God, I prayed and I said, God, now you said in your word in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 that we're not to go to court with their brother. Mm -hmm. So, in August mm -hmm. was when he approached me to settle out of court. And on August the 19th, it was settled, didn't go to court. I got every penny of my $25,000 <laughs> back. And it was four months and 11 days after I had given my Passover offering. Because I said, God, now I've given my Passover offering. And this situation looks hopeless in the natural. It looks impossible. Mm -hmm. For it to be settled in the natural. But a God, I stood before you with my Passover offering. And you said you'd fight my battles for me. And this is a battle that I cannot fight on my own. So God settled it. Gave me every penny of my investment back. 
And I moved right out of there, shook the dust off my feet, and moved on and never looked back. God fought that battle for me. Hallelujah. Yes. And he will you too. Now, the third blessing for standing before God, verse 25, the A part, the very first part of the verse. <coughs> God is going to give you prosperity. God will mm -hmm. give you yes. prosperity. Verse 25. And you shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless thy bread and thy water. Hey, that's meeting your needs. Yes. Meeting your needs. God met the children of Israel's every need while they was in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. He fed them with manna mm -hmm. every morning. He caused water to come out of the rock. He provided everything they needed right. supernaturally. Yeah. They didn't, God sent them manna burgers every day. Mm -hmm. They didn't have to go down to the local Big Mac <laughs> at McDonald's and get them a Big Mac. But God, he, he delivered manna burgers every morning. <laughs> Pizza Hut didn't invent the first delivery service. God did. God delivered manna to the children of Israel every day, provided water for them. He, he met every need that they had. And God not only met their physical needs, He just provided them comfort also. God provided them a pillar of cloud by day and yep. a pillar of fire by night. He, he invented the central heat and air system. Yep. Think about it. For his children because he wanted them to be comfortable and every need met. In Deuteronomy chapter 29 verse 5 tells us that their clothes and their shoes mm. didn't even wear out for 40 years. Mm. In Genesis chapter 26 Genesis chapter 26 verses 1 through 16 it tells us that Isaac sowed in a time of famine he sowed seed he planted seed in a time of famine and it tells us that he received a hundred fold in the same year he sowed in a time of famine one, one time I was laid off for a year and a half a year and a half. It was a time of famine in my life. So I acted on the word of God. Every penny that I got my hands on, I turned around and sowed it into the kingdom of God. Every time I paid my bills, but every time I had an extra penny, I sowed it. I gave it into the kingdom of God. And that year, at the end of the year, at tax time, when I added it and everything up, I had given almost a thousand dollars more than I had given in any year wow. when I had a job. Wow. Now, is that not God or what? Awesome. God gives seed to the sower. We read it in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 10. And that year that I had no job, I had more gross earnings that year than in any year <laughs> prior that I had ever worked. And I didn't have a job. God supernaturally yes. did it. Why? Because I had given my Passover offering. In Genesis chapter 24 verse 40, Abraham told his servant, The Lord before whom I walk will send his angel with thee and prosper thy way. Oh, that's a great yes. promise, isn't it? And God's no respecter of person. If he'll do it for Abraham and Abraham's servant, he'll do it for us. We're servants of the yes. Most High yes. God. Now, the fourth blessing for standing mm -hmm. before God with our yes. Passover offering is in the B part of verse 25 and the A part of verse 26. I will take sickness away from the midst Praise of thee. God. There shall nothing cast their young nor be barren in thy land. God says, I'm going to take sickness away from the midst of thee. And I'm standing on this promise. I'm yes. believing God for yes. the fulfillment of this promise. That he takes sickness, takes this yes. numb foot and toes due to that accident I had to bring healing mm -hmm. in my foot. 
restoration yes. in my back yes. restoration of that pinch nerve in jesus name i am yes. trusting him mm -hmm. i gave my passover offering and i'm reminding the lord lord i stood before you with my passover offering and you said i will take sickness away from the midst of, of you <laughs> God, you are going to take sickness away from the midst of me because I stood before you with my Passover offering. In 2 Kings chapter 20, verses 1 through 7, King Hezekiah, good King Hezekiah was sick and he was dying. Mm -hmm. And God sent the prophet Isaiah to King Hezekiah to tell him, set your house in order because you're going to die, boy. King Hezekiah, the scripture tells us, turned his face to the wall. He was laying in his bed. He rolled over and he look, was looking at the wall. He turned his face to the wall and he cried out to God in prayer. And King Hezekiah said, remember now, God, what I did for you. What had he done? We talked about it a few minutes ago. King Hezekiah had restored the feast of Passover. And so Isaiah, when he got the news that he was going to die, he turned his face to the wall. He cried out to God in prayer. And he reminded God, remember, God, what I did for you. I restored the Passover offering. And God, before the prophet Isaiah could get out of the king's palace, God stopped Isaiah and said, turn around, go back and tell King Hezekiah that he's not going to die. I'm going to give him 15 more years. I'm going to heal him and add 15 years to his life. <laughs> Hallelujah. In 2 Chronicles chapter 30, verse 20, the children of Israel were sick. Why? Well, they had been disobedient mm -hmm. to God again. Yep. And then when King Hezekiah restored the Feast of Passover, King Hezekiah prayed yes. for the children of Israel. In verse 18 of 2 Chronicles chapter 30, King Hezekiah prayed and he said, The good Lord pardon everyone. Mm. He said, Praise God, God, you're a good Lord. Mm -hmm. Would you forgive the children of Israel for being disobedient? Please, Lord, you're so good and you're so kind. Forgive your people. What did God do? Verse 20, and the Lord hearkened or he heard. Mm -hmm. He listened to Hezekiah and what did God do? Heal the people. Yes. So yes. if you're sick now or if the enemy tries to bring sickness on your body later on, say, no, mm -hmm. I gave my Passover right. offering. And God, you promised that you would take sickness away from the midst of me. You promised that you would bring healing to my body. Exodus chapter 15, verse 26. God said, I am the Lord that healeth thee. Yes, yes. And yes. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The fifth blessing for standing before God is found in verse 26, the B part. Mm. God will give you long life and you will not die before Ooh. your appointed time. Hallelujah. God said in verse 26, the last part of the verse, the number of thy days I will fulfill. Mm -hmm. Just like God added 15 more years to Hezekiah's life. Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 40. God said, if you keep my statutes, if you obey me, <coughs> Then you will prolong your days mm -hmm. upon the earth. Right. God will add years, add, years. add days to years. your life. Psalms 91 verses 14 through 16 says, With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. In Psalms chapter 21 verse 4 says, He asked life of thee and thou gavest it him, even length of days yes. forever and ever. Psalms 128 verses 5 through 6 says, The Lord shall bless thee out of Zion, and thou shalt see the good. How long? All oh. the days of thy life. Yea, thou shalt see thy children's children, your grandkids. How about yes. that? Yes. 
Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 15, verse 15. And thou shalt go to thy fathers in peace. Thou shalt be buried in a good old age. That is one of the blessings. Mm -hmm. For giving your Passover offering is long life. And you will not die before your appointed time. The sixth blessing is found in verse 30. God will bring increase and inheritance to you. Let's read, pick it up in verse 27. I will send my fear before thee and will destroy all the people to whom thou shalt come and I will make all thine enemies turn their backs and in the Hebrew it says their necks to thee. In other words, you're going to put your foot on the necks of your enemies. Verse 28, and I will send hornets before thee which shall drive out the Hivite and the Canaanite and the Hittite from before thee. Hey, that's blessing number two, isn't it? God said, I'll be an enemy to your yep. enemies. And by the way, I researched this. And in Bible days, in Old Testament days during this time, there were literal hornets. Mm. That was about an inch long. And if they stung you in vital spots, it says that four of them could even kill a horse. God. That's some How powerful God, yeah. hornets, isn't it? Mm -hmm. How would you like to be an enemy army and be attacked by a yeah. swarm of hornets? Mm -hmm. God fighting against his enemies to protect his people. God said in verse 29, I will not drive them out, talking about their enemies, from before thee in one year, lest the land become desolate and the beasts of the field multiply against thee. By little and little I will drive them out from before thee until thou be increased and inherit the land. God said, just as you are able to take possession of the land, till the land, plow the land, so that thorns, thistles, underbrush won't over grow up in the land and and take it over God says by little and little just as you get to one enemy I'll drive them out and you can yeah. take possession of their land God will give you increase and inheritance hallelujah God will be an enemy to your enemies. God said in verse 30, the B part, I'll drive out your enemies little by little until thou be increased and inherit the land. In Exodus chapter 6 verse 8, God said, I'll bring you into the land and I, and I will give it to you for a heritage or an inheritance in the next year. When you stand before God with your Passover offering, things are going to come to you that you didn't even expect. It'll be a complete surprise. I like surprises, don't yes. you? <laughs> the year that I was laid off, after I gave my Passover offering, I got a check in the mail for $148 from a retirement account that I had closed out two years before then. I needed a miracle that year that I didn't have a job, so I gave five times what I normally give in my Passover offering, and I hadn't even had a chance to mail off part of my Passover offering, and God had already given me back $250 more than I had purposed in my heart to give Him as my offering. Why? Because God gives seed to the sower. Hallelujah. Yes, God is faithful. God gave me increase and inheritance. Mm -hmm. And I hadn't even had a chance to give my whole Passover offering yet. And the same thing happened the next year. I had prayed, I always pray each year and say, God, how much do you want me to give this year in my offering? So the next year, I was still out of, out of work because I was out of work for a year and a half. It was during the time of the recession. Everybody was laying off. Nobody was hiring. And so I prayed and I said, God, how much should I give? And a figure came into my mind and I went, God, you don't mean to give that much, do you, Lord? Remember, I don't have a job. 
but I purposed in my heart to give it. And three weeks before time to give my Passover offering, God had provided almost all of it. Why? Because God gives seed to the sower. And he provided every bit of it before it was time to give it. I tell you, I would go to the mail, there'd be checks in the mail. I would go to church, people would hand me a check or they'd hand me cash money. Everywhere I turn, money coming. Why? Because I purposed in my heart to stand before God, give my Passover offering, and within one month after Passover, God had blessed me with five times what I had given in my mm. Passover offering. And it didn't stop there. I got unexpected blessings that whole year, and it happens every year that I stand before God with my Passover offering. Hallelujah. After I had moved, three months after then, I got a check from Sand Mountain Electric Company for over $100. <laughs> electric company and the insurance companies don't give you money but i got money that year and the state of alabama stopped my unemployment checks four different times one week i got a letter that said hey not only has your unemployment been stopped but now you owe four thousand and eighty dollars back to the state of alabama and I prayed and I said, God, I stood before you with my Passover offering. Now, what are you going to do about this? Yeah. I don't have the $4,000 in unemployment to pay them back. Well, the next week, I got a letter from the state of Alabama. said, oh, we've made a mistake. <laughs> we have reinstated your unemployment and you don't owe that $4,080. Woo! <laughs> shouted all the way from the post office. God, you did it. You did it. You did it. Now let's quickly cover the seventh blessing for standing before God with our Passover offering. It's found in verse 31. God will give you a special year of blessing and God will give you back what the enemy has stolen from you. Look at verse 31. And I will set thy bounds, or the boundaries, from the Red Sea even unto the Sea of the Philistines, and from the desert unto the river, for I will deliver the inhabitants of the land into your hand, and thou shalt drive them out before thee. Hallelujah. The borders of the land for the children of Israel stretched all the way to the Red Sea, where their enemies, Pharaoh and his army, had drowned. And God said in verse 31, I'm going to deliver your enemies into your hands. I'm going to drive your enemies out of your land. I'm going to give you their land. And now, those of you who have kids and grandkids who are not serving God, I don't care if they're in prison, I don't care if they're on drugs, whatever it is, you say, God, God, I stood before you with my Passover offering. And you can tell the devil, you take your hands off my kids, off my grandkids. I have stood before God with my Passover offering, and you got to give my kids back, devil. You get out of my house, take your hands off my family, because I have been obedient to God, and I gave my Passover offering. In Exodus chapter 12, verses 35 through 36, the children of Israel, they had just eaten that Passover meal, and they were getting ready to leave Egypt. And God said, you tell the Egyptians, you give me all your gold, you give me all your silver, you give me all your clothes, you give me all your jewels. Israel got back everything that had been stolen from them during the 430 years that they had been kept in slavery in the land of Egypt. Exodus chapter 12 verse 40 tells us, that and in Exodus chapter 12 verse 36 it says they spoiled the Egyptians in other words they took their stuff back 
they got that, the goods from the Egyptians. And now it's the Egyptians are the ones that are poor when the children of Israel left their land. When you stand before God with your Passover offering, you can get expect to get back whatever the enemy <coughs> has stolen from you. God will give you victory over every attack of the enemy. And God's blessings will come to you one right after another all year long. Why? Because you've stood before him and given your Passover offering. And these seven blessings are yours just as much as they were promised to the children of Israel. Because you are his child today. Amen. 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 Amen.